Thank you, Dr. Plato. So again, I'm Mandy Witt. I'm with Norton Institute. Um, so big question today. Why do I have migraine? I hear this question probably two or three times a day in the clinic. So first off, I want you to know you're not alone. Um, over 47 million Americans have migraine. And like Dr. Plato just said, it's one of the most disabling forms of headache, and it's one of the main reasons why we see people. Um, it accounts for over 50% of disability from neurological diseases. And if you're a woman, you're on with a good 18% of the population and 6% of men. So real quick, before we get into why, what is it? Um, so. A lot of people go, oh, I have this, so I must not have migraine. I'm like, well, not necessarily. So there's no single characteristic that defines what migraine is. You need two of four, okay? So it can be one-sided, throbbing, moderate to severe, and worsened with exertion. But you notice that 40% of patients have both sides. 50% non-pulsating. 20% actually have more mild. And then the pain worsened by exertion, that's generally pretty common. Um, and then it needs to be associated with either nausea or vomiting and or, or photophobia and phonophobia, which is light and sound sensitivity. So basically, if you tell me you have a throbbing headache worsened by exertion and you get nauseous with it, criteria met. Like you don't have to have every single one of these. So what are some other additional features? Just real quick, it's predictable. You normally go, oh, I have the same symptoms all the time. I have similar triggers. Sleep gets it better. I had some kind of weird thing in childhood. You know, oh yeah, I always had that abdominal pain vomiting when I was young. Um, I had dizziness, you know, they never did figure it out. And then as I got older, I've got these migraines. And then the, the weird smell, people tell me weird smells. So what causes all that, all right? Um, is it genetics? Is it environment? Is it a hormone? Is it drugs? Is it trauma? Yes. <laughs> you know, so genes, okay? We know there's a large genetic component but the biggest problem is most of the genes that we have really mapped out are the ones for familiar hemiplegic migraine. We know of these three specific ones. For most people, it's multigenetic. Um, there's all kinds of different genes that are associated that then get triggered. The other is environment, so sunlight. I don't know how many of you guys are looking at that picture of the sun going, oh my God, that's can't stop now odors, high altitude. So I always see people tell me this, like right now with, you know, the storm front coming through, um, that oh, my headaches are much worse. But there's nothing we can really do about that. If we can control the weather, come see me, please. Hormones. So 70% of migraineurs are female, right? Um, there's a drop in the estrogen that can act like a neuromodulator. And then there's pregnancy, birth control, menopause. You ask me, oh, will they get better when I go through menopause? I don't know. It's all variable. And it's not as easy to alter these things as people think. So drugs. You know, as I have this blank underneath here right now, right? So pretty much any drug that's out there, medication that's out there, can have almost all list headache as a possible side effect. So if you come to me and go, hey, I just started this drug, is this a side effect? I'm going, sure. Uh, if, do you stop it? Does it go away? No? Mm, probably not the drug. But the biggest thing is medication overuse. So this is the thing that most people don't realize or think. So what this kind of headache is, is more than half the days of the month for over three months where you're taking one of the acute rescue medications. And then the headaches just keep getting worse and worse and worse. So, and if you stop it, the headaches actually get better. So what are these drugs? 
they're the simple analgesics. They're your Tylenol, ibuprofen, um, aspirin. Um, they're some of the ones we give you, the fioracetics, um, Lortab, opiates, or, oh, and even our triptans and DHE. So butabatol or fioracet, um, if you just take it more than five days a month, it can cause a rebound headache and actually make your headache worse. Opioids, eight days a month. Triptans, NSAIDs, your ibuprofen, your Excedrin, 10 days a month. So if you're taking it on average more than two days a week, it can lead to worsening migraines. So um, opioids, a lot of people are going, but I need this. Well, mm. so it actually leads, this graph shows, um, so there's the, seeing if I can get the pointer to work here, the blue and this. So you see non-opioid dependent versus opioid dependent, it actually increases your headache days. Severe disability from headache, it not just makes them more, it makes them worse, it makes them more painful. And then you have the depression, the anxiety on top of it. So then trauma, okay? So everybody's going, well, you know, did I hit my head when I was younger? Is that why it was caused? A lot of people have remission of their post-traumatic headaches after around six months. Um, three months, 78% still have ongoing headache. A year, 35%. At four years, 24% can still have ongoing, but generally this headache starts right after the trauma. Um, to actually be classified, it needs to be started within a week. So that's kind of the factors and stuff. So what do we know about what does all this stuff do? Or what is it, all right? So with migraine, you can get this prodrome. So it precedes your headache and it's part of the hypothalamus. So your hypothalamus is involved, that's where you get fatigue, depression, irritability, your brain stem's involved, tenderness, neck stiffness, cortex, the light and sound sensitivity, and then the limbic system with depression and endonia. And then you have aura. Does that look familiar to anyone? Uh, yeah. So, Migraine aura is actually a fully reversible neurological deficit, okay? Most commonly visual. And it's cortical spreading depression. So think of an activation deactivation wave going from the back of your occipital up through your brain, okay? And so this is kind of just, it's, if you ever want to look it up, this cortical spreading depression of Liao. Um, and it goes from the visual cortex up. So that's why people get numbness, tingling, all the visual symptoms. It's not the most fun. And then you have the headache, right? Light, sound, we already went over kind of the things. So what causes all of that to happen? So um, old school, we were taught about this vascular theory, right? Where blood vessels constricting, aura followed by dilation, pain, doesn't explain all that prodrome, not supported by blood flow studies. And why does an NSAID work then, right? They, and they shouldn't. So this is not correct. So there's a neurovascular theory, and it's referred pain from the dura mater and blood vessels. And then you have the peripheral and the central processing. So what it is, is once you reach that threshold, you get a release of these neuropeptides called CGRP, substance P, and all these stuff. And those are increased by the stimulation of the trigeminal ganglia. And then you see all of these going up. Um, they've actually done studies where they infuse CGRP to patients and they get headache. So again, just kind of reiterating, you know, the CGRP, and that leads to some of the vasodilation as well. So I'm not saying you don't get vasodilation, it's just not the cause, it's rather what happens after. And then again, the brainstem, thalamus, cortex, all of these things get activated. And so that leads to central sensitization, okay? And after a while, you can get allodonia. So that whole, how does my hair hurt? That's the central sensitization allodonia. We actually have a name. 
Um, I like this little graph just because it kind of shows where those neuropeptides are all getting released. So why do they then get more frequent? You know, why, why do they change? So 3% of patients actually transition from episodic to chronic migraine every year. And so what are some of those causes? Poor rescue medicines. They are not taking anything for it. The frequency, their headaches are just naturally getting more and more and you have high frequent episodic, you're at risk of turning into uh, chronic and then that pain when you touch your head. So you have that threshold lowered, stressors, triggers, episodic migraine, not getting good pain relief or you're taking too much and it just snowballs where you get that increased frequency. The medicines aren't working as well. You're taking more, then they don't work any better and so then you just lead to chronic. So what are some of the triggers, right? The stress, menstruation, sleeping issues, skipping meals, changing weather. Um, so it's hard to tell. Um, I normally go, so they kind of stack up. And so when they st are stacking up, it's hard to tell which one is it, as well as they can happen up to 72 hours before your headache. So if, you're, if you can tell me what you did 72 hours ago, I'm impressed. Um, and this is just kind of that whole threshold here. So your brain. Why you have migraine? Your brain's a little more hyper excitable. You have a sensitive brain, sorry. I'm not saying you're sensitive, but your brain is. And then um, you can get aura, which is the spreading, excitation, depression, and then the trigeminal inflammation with the throbbing pain. So 